Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Thank you for being part of the broadcast today, and thank you very much for letting me be part of your day. My Bible right now is sitting open to the book of 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, if you can, go and turn in your own copy of the Word of God. 1 John chapter 2, we come to verse 1, where the word advocate, that Christ is our advocate, is used. I, I hope you've heard messages on the fact that Jesus Christ is our advocate. In the 1800s, a great man of God, in writing about this verse, talked about Jesus being our patron. That's the word he used as a synonym because he said in ancient Roman times, a patron was someone who looked after the interests of his clients in every way. Usually the patron was an influential person who provided protection and direction and simply just promoted the welfare of those who were his clients, a patron. In reading a devotional journal one time, I read about a man a Christian man who had a devout Christian lawyer who was his, in essence, patron. He talked about when a truck had run a stop sign, it demolished the man, the trunk of this man's car. And he pleaded, this Christian lawyer pleaded the man's case and made certain that this Christian man was compensated for his loss. That lawyer, as the man said, was his patron. He was his advocate. Well, dear friend, Jesus Christ meets our spiritual needs in much the same way as that lawyer did when you and I sin. God's standard for his children is that we do not sin, but we all do sin. You know that and I know that. To be restored, we must confess our sins and be forgiven. That's what 1 John 1, 9 is about. But we also need someone who can plead our case for us, and that is the person of Christ. He is our advocate, our patron, our lawyer. We get to look at that today. Get your Bible out and join me. Let's talk about Christ being our advocate. As we're getting ready to look at God's Word today, In My Hand is one of our gospel tracts. This one's really written for uh, young people. I say young people, children in the older elementary age bracket. This one's entitled, Are You in Danger? Are You in Danger? It's a story based upon an incident in the life of our founder, Paul Levine. When he was 12 years old, he was out at, at night in a rowboat, and a thunderstorm came up, and he had to uh, handle the rowboat by himself. He didn't start off being by himself, but an older man had to leave uh, the boat at the shoreline, and Paul Levine had to row the boat to a place where he could meet this man and get into the car and so on. But the lightning was flashing, and there was some real danger going on. That incident is used here in this gospel track, this gospel pamphlet, to talk about to young people how their lives are in danger because of a first, a, a more fierce uh, uh, situation than just lightning from the sky. The fierce danger is being thrown into the lake of fire forever. You say, oh, Brother Mark, I don't think we ought to talk to young people about the lake of fire. Frankly, I think we ought to. Now, we ought to do it and not try to scare them out of uh, uh, in the situation, but they need to know the consequences of their personal sin. Here's a great gospel track. Are you in danger? I give this one out all the time. It's been used of God to lead children to Christ. Let me send it to you, please, won't you? I want to send you this track along with a sample pack out of all of our English gospel tracks. Now, we send out tracks all over the world, free of charge as God enables us. I want to send you a free sample pack out of all of our English tracks. Let me do that, please. At the end of the broadcast, my announcer will make known to you a means of communicating with us. Three means, as a matter of fact, pick out one that best suits your life pattern contact us, give us your name and address. We'll send out that sample packet to you. 
Well, come, let me read 1 John chapter 2. Let me read just verses 1 and 2. They say this, My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now, we've been walking our way through the book of First John, and I discovered that I've not been doing a very good job at giving you my outline, so let me try to remedy that here right now. Uh, beginning at chapter 1 and verse 5, going through chapter 2 and verse 17 is the first major section of the book of 1 John, a section that I've entitled, for me and my outline, I've entitled it, The Crisis of Sin and How to Deal with It. The Crisis of Sin in and How to Deal with It. In my outline of this big section, I've broken this section up into four smaller ones, and I've given a title to each of those sections beginning with a letter, a word beginning with the letter R. Let me tell you what they are right now. In chapter 1, verse 5 through verse 10, the R word is relationship. Our relationship between God, God's relationship with us. He's holy, we're sinners, all right? Uh, beginning here in chapter 2, verses 1 through 6, my word is remedy. The remedy for sin and how we know that it's worked in our lives. Then chapter 2, verse 7 through verse 11, the, the word there is the word rule. There is a rule, the rule of love, that now pervades our lives because sin has been remedied in us. We know Christ is our Savior. And then chapter 2, verses 12 to 17, the word there is requirement. God requires that his children not love the world. But come back with me now to the first verse of chapter 2 of 1 John. Let's see the remedy for sin. Two key ideas come out here in these opening six verses. Idea number one is the word answer. What is the answer for sin? And we're going to see that answer is Christ. But the second key idea is the application of that answer. Verses one and two tell us that the answer for sin is the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, his death on Calvary. We're going to see as we move on that verses three through six tell us some insights as to how we can know personally that we have applied this answer to our lives. But again, look at verse 1. Verse 1 begins, My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. Verse 1 begins with a purpose statement that we sin not. These words are written by the Apostle Paul, excuse me, the Apostle John to believers. And the heart of the Apostle John is that his fellow saints not have lives who have a, a pattern of sinful living. Do believers sin? Will believers sin? Yes, we will. But we are not to have, uh, let sin rule or dominate in our lives. Sin should not be the life pattern of our lives. We have, as the result of being born again, we have a new force inside of us. This new force is our new nature, a new principle. We have the Holy Spirit of God living in us. But we move from the purpose statement in verse 1 to a potential statement. The potential is that you and I will potentially commit sins in our present day-to-day -day lives. Sin, as I said, is not to be dominating us, but we can, believers can, and we will do acts of sin. But after talking about the potential, he then moves to a provisional statement. Since sin acts are possible, God has made provision for how to handle these sin issues. That provision is the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I think by now you've noticed a pattern in the lesson here on the, on the broadcast today. I've been using some words, all beginning with the letter P. Let me re repeat the ones I've already given, and there's six in all. Let me give you all six of them. Verse 1 begins with a purpose statement that believers not practice sin. Then there's a potential statement. We can commit sins, but then a provisional statement that our provision is a person of Jesus Christ. Then to make sure we get that point, my fourth word that begins with the letter P is a person is stated openly, clearly, that is Jesus Christ. He is our advocate. 
we're going to see as we move on through here, not today, but as we move on, the idea of Christ being our propitiation, a propitiation, a satisfaction is stated, and then a population statement is made. Now, I'll say more, as I said, about those last two words later on. But for today, let me focus on this one issue, the remedy for sin. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, then you need to know you are a sinner. And there's only one remedy for you and that sin in your sin, and that is the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. You need the cleansing power of the shed blood of Christ. That's, that very thing was mentioned in verse 7 of chapter 1 of 1 John. Now, the Bible says that without the shedding of blood, Christ's blood, there is no remission, there's no forgiveness of sins. Both in the first chapter of the book of Ephesians and the book of Colossians, we have verses that, well, are, they're almost identical. The one in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 says this, in whom, speaking of Christ, in Christ we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. The remedy for your sin, my friend, is not your moral goodness. It's not your church membership, your church activity, your church baptism or communion. The remedy for your sin was the blood of Jesus Christ shed on Calvary's cross. In the upper room with his disciples at the Last Supper, Jesus openly said that he was going to be giving his blood for the purpose of forgiving sins, to deal with sins. If you are working to deal with your sins by some other method, then you are going to fail and your sins are still wholly stuck to you. You stand guilty before God because you have done sin and your sins are stuck on your life. Just because you desire that your sins be forgiven, because you want your sins to be taken away, your desire is not enough. I desire to be a millionaire, but I'm not a millionaire. My desire is not enough. Your desire to be forgiven is not enough. You must humbly come to God, cry to God for his cleansing power, his remedy. You need to be spiritually washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if you go to a church where they don't make much and don't sing much and read much about the blood shed of Christ, the, the blood shed by Christ on Calvary's cross, if your church doesn't talk about that hardly at all or, or never, then you are in a wrong church. The only remedy for sin, my dear friend, is the shed blood of Jesus Christ. He died on the cross, shed his blood, that he, through his shed blood, can cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Oh, you need to receive him. Cry out to him for mercy. Cry out to him with repentance for your sin. Ask him to cleanse you, and he will. His blood was shed that you might be forgiven. Receive him as your Savior now. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 828 6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois 61702. Again, our phone number is 309 828 6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.